The Minister of Health has given the board management and CEO of Kumfuano Chitichin Hospital a 14-day ultimatum to produce the bodies of five babies who cannot be traced from the hospital but are alleged to have died at birth. A doctor and a midwife on duty on the night the babies were born are to proceed on leave. Less on duty should proceed on leave and since she belongs to the Ghana Registered Midwives Association, we are referring her to the Ethics and Disciplinary Committee of the Ghana Midwife Association for them to investigate and then uh, bring redress on the matter. So they will definitely write back to us. Meanwhile, the police in Kumasi has charged seven people believed to be staff of the Kompuanochi Teaching Hospital with stealing and conspiracy to steal a baby. The charges follow investigations into the mysterious disappearance of a stillborn baby at the hospital. This is today's big story. My name is Stephen Anti. The Ministry of Health has given nurses, midwives and the entire board and management of Confuanochi Teaching Hospital 14 working days to produce the bodies of five babies who cannot be traced from the hospital but are alleged to have died at birth on February 5th. Johnny's News reporter Yafusu Ajemfi will be joining me with details. But let's now hear uh, the press uh, clip from the press briefing earlier today. Tim to the CEO of, of Konfuanochi Hospital, the board and members of Konfuanochi Hospital, that they should account for five stillborn babies delivered on the 5th of February, including Madame Mumuni's baby. They should tell us the whereabouts of these five stillborn babies, the procedures of uh, how they dispose of them, who collects them, where they are. So we are giving the uh, Kompanochi teaching hospital 14 working days to tell us the whereabouts of all the five stillborn babies delivered on the 5th of uh, February. Well, this is today's big story. We'll take a short break and we'll return and have a discussion with your news reporter, Ya Ofosuya Janfi, who was at the press briefing earlier today. Welcome back to today's big story. So, yeah, it's nice to have you here. You look Thank so you. good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this whole uh, this whole problem with the missing baby is I'm beginning to be shocked as to why we thought there was one baby and now it's actually five. Tell us what the Minister of Health has been saying. Okay, so um, when this whole saga began, I think the ministry was a bit quiet over mm. it and then so many um, calls came in that they mm. should comment on on the issue so um, a committee was set up and mm. it was headed by um, Dr. Nafisa who is also the policy and evaluation um, um, okay. who works with, with the ministry, ministry. And, and that yeah mm. and um, I think that the, the, they, they had a report they had to investigate and then through the investigation it was revealed um, that um, truly um, Swaba the lady in, yeah. in the saga was referred from um, a hospital Suiba, Amamata, yes, Suiba yeah. okay. was referred uh, from a, a, a mm. hospital and then she was um, referred from um, 
um, Amamata Memorial Maternity Clinic yeah. where she received antenatal care. So on the 4th, she was referred to the Okonfano Teaching Hospital. Hospital. So um, when she, she arrived there, um, she was being um, attended to by um, the staff on duty. And um, we learned that um, 16 deliveries were done that day mm. on that fifth um, okay. February, 16 deliveries. And then out of the 16, five were still um, born born babies so um the, they also found that that during um the attendance as mm. to attending to the patients mm. there was a bit of um um communication gap let me just put it that yeah. communication gap because the doctor that attended to Sweba um had um, recorded a fatal beat um, which uh, in medical terms they say is 142 um per minute so it was a normal a regular which, which meant the baby was not dead the baby wasn't uh, according to the report I see. but then the midwife on duty also recorded a different thing but didn't communicate that to the doctor, the doctor. so and um, with the five hours that this lady um, was in labor or was at the hospital and um, there were two different reports yeah with the records Very that, conflicting that were, yeah reports. and then there was a gap because this nurse also didn't communicate to the doctor what she had recorded mm. and the doctor also didn't know what she also had so it, it, it just came up that the lady was shown just as a, a stillborn baby and then after they had um, family members the and we can't even tell or verify whether what was shown to her is actually yeah. her child yeah, or somebody yeah. else's child yes yeah. so so the report um says so um it, it looks like um the orderly who is said to have um, carried these dead bodies to wherever is whether the morgue or the incinerator? Or wherever they, they yes, um, learned he's been working. We, we learned that he's been working at the hospital for 25 years, but was just sent to this department for just three days. Oh yeah just three days so when he was asked he um, first said he had taken the um, babies the cops to mm -hmm. the morgue mm -hmm. but when they went there there were no records showing mm -hmm. that and then later he said he had taken it to the incinerator and i think this has what has been in the media mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. long for and long. then yeah when they went to the incinerator they realized that there was nothing li like that because the incinerator is used for amputated and uh, legs limbs and then um, syringes mm -hmm. and stuff so it couldn't have been used for um dead babies yeah Disposing of a disposing dead baby. Disposing of dead babies. So, um, so really, I mean, what, what directive? What directive is the ministry okay, issuing okay. now? I mean, seeing from these conflicting reports that we've had and all the incidences that are uh, occurring. Okay, so the ministry has now decided that um, now that the reports are showing that five babies were born dead, they would want um, the board and then the CEO of the um, Okonfanochi Teaching Hospital to put account for these dead bodies because we can't find them so now it's no more one that is Weber's baby but the other four making mm -hmm. it five babies mm -hmm. so now we are the, the, the hospital or the management is supposed to account for the other five babies that were born mm -hmm. dead and then um, the ministry is also asking that the orderly should be interdicted um, should be interdicted and then the nurse the midwife that attended to um, Sweba and then the doctor should also proceed on leave and they've also been referred this, to... This is becoming very serious. I mean, yeah. considering that the, the, the youth of Abuabo stormed the hospital and the hospital workers felt threatened, their life was in, you know, in danger and they even took a strike, now it's, it's becoming clear that there, there must have been miscommunication or perhaps negligence on the part of these Yeah, th this really shows um, how um, sometimes um, some ladies or some women who give birth are being mm. uh, taken advantage of. Mm. Because now it looks like five other babies are, uh, um, four other it, babies we are lost. And we thought it was actually. only one. So now where are the other four? Including mm. um, Swaber's baby, where are the mm. other four? And because the other mothers also didn't ask for this, mm. we, we, we now would have to mm. account for it because there are no dead bodies. You can't find the bodies. So where are the, 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 the bodies of these um, um, children? Right. Well, on um, today's big story, we're still uh, trying very hard to get to the public relations of the Confanochi Teaching Hospital and a representative from uh, the midwifery, Nurses and Midwifery Council. They all agreed to speak to us, though, but uh, we're, we're trying very hard. They're not picking. We're hoping that they will pick up their call and uh, we'll have a chat with them. This is today's big story. I still have Yah with me. So, so Yah, you went there. What was the minister's demeanor? Is it, did it look like she 
she was going to be ruthless in enforcing this 14-day ultimatum or is just one of those rhetoric? No, yeah. in, in fact, we, we had to ask um, the minister because this is not the first time a um, committee set up to look mm. into such investigations. Exactly. It ends up mostly that you don't even hear of what happens in the end. So mm. we insisted that how well are they going to ensure that whatever mm. recommendations or whatever is the bottom um, of this issue comes out and the minister insisted that she's going to really ensure that um, whatever recommendations or whatever sanctions mm. that are supposed to be meted out to these um, culprits would be done. And then going forward, she also mentioned um, that they are going to ensure that whatever administrative rights um, are also done because on a normal mm. note, the lady um, Swever should have been accompanied by um, a, a report from wherever she was exactly. even referred from. And there was nothing like and that. And there, there was, was nothing, nothing like record. that as well. So she, she said that um, they are going to make sure that policies are, are, are set out and then all, um, going forward as well, to, they are going to let um, nurses have badges with their names mm. on it so that if you have any issue with any nurse or whoever maltreats you mm. at the hospital, you can um, complain it to the hospital authorities. And, and the ministry also says that it's going to set up um, a complaints um, committee mm. or um, an, a, a call center where people can send their complaints mm. to because it's just becoming way too much that you go to the hospital you want um health care delivery and you receive something else something else and sometimes something you else. lose your life and yeah. it does appear that this looks like an indictment on the part of the nurses i do know that there are many hard-working doctors and nurses yes. in our hospitals across yeah. the country and i must say that they do a brilliant job but if for miscommunication and errors of this nature it is very sad isn't it yeah it, it is because um it looks like um this um baby um, missing saga it has become very topical because mm -hmm. it looks like people don't have evidence but yeah. now this one the, the mother is pressing to to get her um, the the dead body so it looks like everybody now wakes up and want to find out so where have all these are missing uh, mm -hmm. our, our babies mm -hmm. been to mm -hmm. where have mm -hmm. they been to so mm -hmm. it, it raises the question of um, society um, being particular about details mm -hmm. details mm -hmm. you have to be particular about certain things because you don't you just don't give up on on just yeah. one thing if she had given up i don't think we would have, we would have been to here this mm. extent you, of the you will be on this beat for a while I'll tell me some of the areas that you're going to explore moving forward because at the end of the day i mean you the reporter on the ground would have to uh be 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 diligent and thorough in your analysis to bring up the issues. I mean, now that this is here, um, what should we be expecting from, from today on? Yeah, um, Steve, I, I think that there are administrative procedures that are supposed to be followed at our various hospitals. Mm. And, and there's even this um, uh, patient's charter where um, we always talk about the patient's rights. Yeah. So now it, it brings to bear what the responsibilities and rights of these patients are. Mm -hmm. Are they being adhered to? We, these are some of the things that are missing in our society. Mm -hmm. And then um, looking at it, it looks like um, because there are not adequate um, health um, personnel to mm -hmm. attend to, some of these um, patients' charter are not being adhe adhered to. So going forward, we want to look at this charter, how yeah. um, institutions or hospitals are going to implement some of these things to make sure that the right things are done at the various hospitals. Well, this is today's big story, and if you've just joined us, the Ministry of Health has issued a 14 working day ultimatum to the midwives and nurses of Konfuano Institution Hospital to produce the bodies of five babies who uh, are alleged to have been stillborn at the hospital. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. hospital for a reaction on this ultimatum and subsequently speak to the nurses and midwife, uh, midwifery council but also on today's big story did the president intentionally brush, brush aside issues affecting cocoa farmers in his state of the nation address well the MPP minority in parliament thinks so uh, at a press conference here in Accra the minority cited a reduction in the production of cocoa uh, smuggling and inflationary pressures among other things as pertinent issues affecting uh, Ghana's cocoa industry that needed to be addressed so how worrying are these issues and did the president deliberately brush them aside in the state of the nation well i'm now joined on the line by mp4 quad so a minority spokesperson on our greek uh, dr owusu akutu uh, doc it's great to have you here on uh, today's big story uh 
Thank you very much. So quickly, what's your point really that the president intentionally brushed aside the issues of uh, the issues affecting cocoa farmers or what? Yeah, but you know, he made a confession at his uh, meet the press conference at uh, the first half house, didn't he? When he was asked about the fact that bonuses have not been paid to cocoa farmers, he, he told the questioner that he wasn't aware. He didn't know. And if in the most important industry in your country, cocoa, the farmers who actually produce the crop are denying their bonuses, and the president of the country is not aware, it means that it's, you know, it's a subject which is not very important to him and it's not his priority. Mm. That, that, that would be my evidence. And the fact that he comes to parliament, the cocoa uh, sector is in more or less a crisis, but uh, would reduce production, which he himself admits has affected the foreign earnings of this country. I calculate about 600 million US dollars loss uh, because of reduced production in cocoa. And he doesn't mention anything about the remedies that he has in, in mind to resuscitate the industry. Then we are in trouble, aren't we? Well, so, so you are demanding that as a result of these pressures you talk about, government should consider paying more uh, to cocoa farmers for the beans there they buy. There is an urgent need for government to increase producer prices today, now as I speak. We've been saying this since October last year when they said well, they are refusing to increase the price. We said that it is not a sensible policy because at least on the account of inflation in 2013, uh, on account of devalu uh, the, the, the devaluation of the current, the CD uh, depreciating by 20% or more in the year 2013 alone, the government should be able to give an increase in prices to the cocoa farm. But if you say, and, yeah, and, and, sorry. And, and, and they are still sticking their guns, even though the, the, the depreciation has led, uh, is almost on the floor. Well, uh, but, uh, some buying the CD at three Ghana. Uh, the, the, the dollar at three Ghana City, 2.7, 2.5, and so on. It gives plenty of room for the government now to increase the prices so that they to give more incentives to our, our cocoa farmers to increase production. But, Doctor, you have just said that production has gone down. So, yes. if production has gone down, where then do you expect government to raise the money to pay no, extra no, for no, the beans? I'm talking it's, about it's finance. I'm talking about the fact that. The external revenue that we get, earnings that we get from cocoa, when you bring it into this country, cocoa farmers are not paying in dollars. They are paying in city. And in city terms, when there's a depreciation of the currency, you get more cities for the same amount of dollars. Please, and listen to me very carefully. Mm. So the government has, the, the revenue in terms of local currency is far, far more than it, it used to be. So we are saying that that alone should be enough to give them a substantial increase in, in their price. We are not asking them to go and find money from anywhere. Mm. It's the earnings from cocoa that we are saying, is the foreign exchange earnings from cocoa that we are saying, one converted to local currency gives the government more revenue. So he should use part of that revenue to increase the price paid to cocoa farmers. It's very simple. And, and what, else, what else do you want, really? Oh, we also want to make sure that the high-tech program and the mass frame program as designed and instituted and implemented by the COFO administration since 2001 should also be restored. This business of cutting back on the subsidized fertilizer for the high-tech program to cocoa farmers and the mass frame which has been cut back quietly, uh, they should all be restored to their full strength so that farmers can spray effectively their cocoa trees and uh, fertilize their cocoa trees to mm. yield more for them, for the farmers and this country. But Dr. Dr. Uzakoto, I mean, the government just recently increased the buying price of cocoa from these farmers. Are you not no, that, overstretching, that not overstretching that is, this? Uh, that, but that's not true. Please, check your facts before you make pronouncements on national uh, radio. The government has not increased prices for the last two years. Please, check your facts. In October, they came out with an announcement that they are not going to increase pricing. Please check your facts. Mm. So, I mean, if beyond that, I mean, beyond increasing the prices and all the demands that you're making, you think this is what we need to increase production? Oh, yes. Hey, everywhere in the world, that's what, how they do it. Agriculture is producing 1.3, 1.4 million metric tons 
not for nothing. They are using these same methods. Right, and, and there is also the issue of smuggling. You haven't exactly, um, perhaps, made suggestions of how the smuggling uh, crisis could be resolved, rather than it's just... It's all to do with the incentive of prices. Mm. At the moment, prices on the other side of, the, uh, of our both borders, like Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, co 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 a bag of cocoa is, is going for 240 Ghana cities. On this side of the border is 212 Ghana cities per bag. We say that if they are able to increase the producer price, the smuggling will stop. If they don't, the smuggling will continue. And as the city devalues, more smuggling will go on. So not only are we losing output through reduced production, but we're also losing the export through illegal export to our neighbors. Right, thank you very much, Dr. Ozo Akoto, MP for Kwadaso and Minority Spokesman. So, back to our earlier story, Midwife Council has um, charged the Kompanochi Teaching Hospital Board and Management and CEO to supervise the provision of the bodies of five uh, babies who are alleged to have died stillborn at the hospital. We are now joined on the line by a representative from the Nurses and Midwifery Council. Good evening, sir, and thanks for your time on today's big story. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, yeah. Uh, precisely, I am the president of the Ghana Registered Nurses Association. Right, so president of the Ghana Registered Nurses Association. Thanks for the correction. So, this ultimatum, how does it appear or sound to your ears, considering that from where we stand, we see it as an indictment on really the nurses and doctors that were on duty on that day? Oh, well, first of all, I must say that... Uh, it is in order that the uh, grand madam of the ministry, which is the, who is the uh, honourable minister, uh, has done uh, so much work about the uh, incident that happened at the Confederate Teaching Hospital. And um, whatever it is, we are all obliged to uh, contribute to ensure that the directives that he has ordered uh, are complied with. And, uh, each party within the stakeholder circle uh, is expected to play his or her part. And so I think uh, it's another. Right. Now, particularly the, the doctor and midwife on duty who attended to Sueba who have been asked to proceed on leave, uh, does the association see this as fair? Well, that's, uh, I must say, it's uh, a bit rather uh, too harsh. And, uh, we we are thinking about uh, appealing to the honourable minister to um, to to make uh, this 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 which, this in which we deem as a, a punishment to them mm. um, to be released, so that uh, while the investigations go on, um, they still put to their work. Because I believe that uh, when the when it comes on the uh, regulatory body to which these professionals belong uh, to institute the investigations and disciplinary measures against them, or rather to investigate the background, I think that is enough. So whatever they will come out with uh, will be uh, passed on to the Honorable Minister. And then probably from there, uh, we can think about uh, uh, putting this action uh, through. But do you not think that as responsible officers, health officers on duty on that day. They had a duty of care to ensure that the right thing was done? Exactly. We believe that. We believe that uh, in 100% terms. And uh, we have spoken to the issue, in fact, since uh, it happened on that fateful day. And uh, this is exactly what uh, we have been talking about, mm. that uh, in case they are indicted and uh, cited as having uh, plea down on professional ethics, then uh, we know the sort of action that we will institute against them. But I believe you, I, I understand you that uh, when professionals are on their line of duty do anything on board, uh, they should receive a due punishment for that. And uh, But that should come about after we are satisfied with the fact that indeed they are culpable. And so um, I still think that there's a need for some restraint to the exercise in this matter as we continue to conduct investigations into this matter. And then when we get there, um, we will do that uh, which is uh, applicable and suitable. But 
now let me ask you finally before I let you go. Are you not embarrassed by the sequence of contradiction? I mean, body was supposed to be disposed. Some say it was disposed. It was found it wasn't disposed. There was no record at the mark to suggest that it was brought there. I mean, are you not embarrassed that this should happen in Ghana, 20th century? Yeah, yeah, that is what, that's what we are saying, that uh, all these uh, allegations have to be substantiated. And I think uh, we have come quite on top of the issue with the uh, information contained in the press release of the Honorable Minister. And that has sought to clarify some of the issues. And then uh, we will take it on from there. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Asante Krobia, is president of the Ghana Nessus and Midwifery uh, Association. My name is Stephen Enti and this is today's big story. Uh, we'll be back with Joy News Interactive with Pretty uh, Gladys Radio. Stay with us. Well, it's now time for Journeys Interactive, and Gladys is here. Gladys. Hi, Steve. Hey, what's up? Ah, managing. What's trending? You are the trending lady. <laughs> well, we, we're still looking a bit further at the Kumasi Baby Saga, the Confidential Teaching very Hospital sad, Baby. Very eh? sad, Yeah, very unfortunate. Ah, and now, so what are you bringing us? coming left and right. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at that. And then, of course, A Plus has also been banned from... Um, BBC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so right, we're looking so at all, all right, those. So I'll right. Leave right here. Right. Thank you. Yeah, sure. This is JN Interactive. You are welcome. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> You can join us via our social media platforms, facebook.com slash joinnews on TV. They are also twitter.com slash joinnews on TV. The handles are at joinnews on TV and hash JN Interactive GH. You could also send us email via joinnewsim at multitvworld.com and you send your opinions, your comments to us and we will be right here talking about your comments. Of course, we keep the show running with your contribution as well, so we interact together. Well, we are looking at two issues today, developments of the cast baby saga and A+, plus, who has caught the wrong attention of BBC. Well, so the BBC has banned Ghanaian hip life artist A+, plus, from posting comments on its Facebook page for expressing his personal views on homosexuality. A plus posted a comment saying, there is a one-way mission to Mars. All gays can join. Fortunately, you are not coming back to Earth. Africa hates you. We hate gays. The BBC responded to his comment saying, and fortunately, you are not coming back here. You are hereby banned from posting on BBC Africa Facebook for your hateful message. We are also reporting you to Facebook. Well, so... A plus returns to post Chia. Come to Ghana and you will get what that means. Still no gays in Africa. Well, uh, I have been joined on phone by the Ghanaian comedian and hip life artist A plus. Hello A plus. Thanks for joining us on GN Interactive. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have been banned from BBC Facebook. Um, how does that make you feel, Esther? No, no, not at all. Feel that the, the African survey, as it is called, is not really uh, there for Africa. The BBC it has different uh, uh, stations with different regions based, uh, based on their culture and their understanding of them. And the African service is just, uh, unfortunately, Whoever was admin, uh, administrating the page on the day that this whole incident happened want, wanted uh, people to tell him or her what uh, the person wanted, wanted to hear. 
the person forgot that 80 to 90 percent of people who were commenting on the page were saying that we don't want gayism in Africa. If it is the African service and it is there for Africa, you would have to listen to the majority voices out there. You don't say minority have, have rights. If that is the case, then when we vote in election and majority say we want Mr. A, we have to give minority their rights by giving them Mr. B. You know, so it doesn't make me feel as a size only it's only unfortunate that the African service is not there for Africa. I see. So um after after so now you cannot post any comment there anymore. I are you are you sad about that? Yes, uh, because I've been I've been I have too many people that I communicate with uh, and for, for me, you know, when I went on the page today, I saw people asking them why they banned me from commenting on their page. And it's not even Kenyans only. There are people from Congo, there are people from Uganda that are asking why have you banned Swami Islam from commenting on your page? And you see, if you want to impose things on people and these people are not well educated on the subject that you want them to accept, then what will happen is this Boko Haram issue in, in, in Nigeria. If you don't make the people understand that men, all men are created equal or all men are born equal, if you don't make people understand that and you come and say everybody can be gay, then people will take up um, and say, no, we won't agree. We are here in Africa. People don't want to accept the fact that somebody must be gay. I don't want to accept that, but if two consenting adults are in a room and are doing their own gay stuff, that is their problem. My problem is the fact that you want to impose it on us and say, Mr. Kuku and Mr. Kofi must be allowed to marry, go to register general or high court and go and register and government must accept it. Well, so um, you, you just told us uh, you're not happy. Does it also, um, does it have any implication on um, your future opportunities with the BBC? Does it mean that you might have missed opportunities to ever be invited by the BBC for any event or any interview or anything like that? Uh, that, that, that shouldn't be a problem. If my stance against gayism is why I wouldn't have that opportunity. In fact, I'll be very happy about that. In fact, it won't, it won't ever change. And not too long ago, I was talking to the public affairs director at the American Embassy, and, and I explained to her, and I said, look, so, James, listen to me. If you want us to do gay and whatever, you have to educate the people, let them understand that this, this is this people's sexual orientation or whatever. Let's leave them to do their own stuff. This is how these people, let all human beings live, irrespective of somebody's sex. And let us as Africans understand it and do it uh, uh, based on our own timeline. Let nobody come and tell us when to, or if you don't do this, I'll but no. So if, if, if all of those won't be done, if we don't understand and you want to impose something like and I said no. And because of that, it will affect the relationship between me and the BBC, like, like it affects, it, it, it's happening between Museveni and Obama. It, it doesn't change anything. It, it, it even makes me happy. So, in short, you think it, the BBC uh, Facebook page hasn't been fair to you, right? Oh, of course. I've been on their page now. I was going to, I was going to see if I could comment. Honestly, <laughs> I was going to see if I could comment on something. Unfortunately, I, when I, I wanted to like something, and that was when I realized that I had been blocked. I couldn't like. I didn't like the comment that the person had posted. <laughs> and uh, I think that they have not been fair. It, it is the African service. It's there for Africans. And so they'll have to listen to majority voices. Mm. A plus, thank you so much for um, joining us to explain your side of the issue to us. That is uh, the Ghanaian hip life artist and comedian A plus who joined us on phone to tell us what exactly happened and how he feels unfairly treated. Let's see what you have been saying on WhatsApp about the A plus ban on Facebook page. So. Kashan Atakosumak says, hmm, G8. Well, so that's from Fosumak. Prosper Silencer says, in fact, he has said it right. Mm, okay, you agree with A+. Plus. Prince Amwa Robinson says, I'm a witness to that effect. How? Oh, could BBC... Okay, so, oh, how could BBC Africa? Well, 
well, <laughs> Prince and Wasang. Cyril Tigbe says he just said what many of our leaders are too cowardly to say. Um, okay. Jojo says Shia to the BBC. Kudos to A plus. He can create another ca account and go back on that BBC page. <laughs> <laughs> well, Martin Aluta says, I really appreciate his boldness and courage because it's insane to allow this sinful act in Africa. Why? Thumbs up, A+. Plus. Mm. Martin? <laughs> okay. Edichum Yaose says, the truth will always be the truth. Edichum, thanks for your contribution. Um, let's quickly take one more. Ebenezer Mesu Enki says, Chia. <laughs> Ebenezer. Okay, so, um, Ebenezer. Okay, so we have uh, Oluman who says, I support my countryman, A plus, because this is Africa. Well, so you support your countryman. Thank you. Um, Johnson Macransom says, The truth really hurts. A plus was right. I don't know why BBC is taking that too far. So that's uh, from John McRanson. And um, quickly, I, I just want to go on Facebook and see what some of you have also been saying about the issue. Um, okay, so um, quickly, let me just go um, to our second issue, which is the, uh, the Ministry of Health has given the Ghana Midwifery Council 14 days to find the baby of Sueba and five other babies that have gone missing at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. The directive comes just hours after the Ashanti Regional Police PR told Joy News that um, they have charged seven persons suspected to be staff of Konfanochi with stealing and conspiracy to steal a baby. Meanwhile, prior to that directive, some family members and sympathizers of Sueba intended to embark on a demonstration. In a petition yet to be released, they wrote, okay, so they went, the objectives and goals of our petition are, the first one says, we will print out the petition after one week and present it to the Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, copy it to the Presidency, Parliament, Media Houses, all other relevant institutions with the following terms of reference within a timeline of two weeks that the ministry ensures that the baby or its body be produced, heads of all on whose watch this horror happened must resign or be fired and relevant charges preferred. Or we petition the president to ensure the above and scrap the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. What will be the use of the ministry if it cannot and share the above and quote. Well, so um, we have been joined online by our Shanti Regional Correspondents who will be giving us a bit more insight to this petition and um, gauge the mood in the Ashanti region about the, uh, after the directive, how are people taking it? Hello, Nuruddin. Hello, Gladys. Thanks for joining us, Nuruddin. Thank you very much, Gladys. All right. So um, obviously, the petition hasn't yet been released. So how are they taking in the new directive coming from the Ministry of Health? Well, the family are very, very happy. They think that the uh, uh, they think that this this uh, directive by the ministry uh, is going to be uh, a very good thing. They they are, they are saying we go to the family. Uh, they were there in their numbers, uh, very discussing about the issue, and they, they think that as uh, the, the case will surely they will, they will surely get to the bottom of the of the matter, and, and so they were very happy when I went to the family family members from the, those nearby and those uh, far came, and they were discussing about the issue, but they are thanking the general public for their support and for their contribution towards. Uh, the, 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 what, what they are hearing now. I see. So, um, also going back to the hospital, have you passed through there? Have you gauged the mood after the directive? Uh, for now, Gladys, we, we have not been able to speak to the authorities at the hospital. Uh, we, we, we haven't mm -hmm. spoken with them to find out 
uh, what the, 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 the mood over there and what they are also doing about the directives of the Ministry of Health. There are seven persons arrested by the police. Are they um, those who were on duty that night the baby got lost or um, who are they? Well, the police uh, have, have decided not to tell us whether they are staff of the hospital. We've been speaking with them to find out actually who were those people, but uh, the police are not telling us who, 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 whether they are the staff of the hospital or not. But as you know, the, the, the incident happened at the hospital, and we are suppressing that these seven people are staff of the hospital uh, who, who, who were charged. Uh, with, with a, a stealing and uh, the different conspiracy, conspiracy to steal. I see. Okay. So, um, Nuruddin, hold on. I have also been joined online by a family member, Abdul Rahman, who will uh, also tell us really how uh, he's immediate so he can better express how exactly they are feeling. Hello, Abdul. Hello. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome to Jane Interactive on Joy News. Thank you. Um, how does you, uh, the family, how is the family feeling now that um, the Ministry of Health has issued that um, directive? Yeah, the family is very much happy than the community as a whole. The whole community and the family are not happy as the focus of the situation and the outcome of the investigation. From the immigrant community, as a last week, the reform that they issued was an issue of the ICD and the issue. Give them the benefit of doubt for the investigation. And uh, the only thing that are moving on now, we are very much happy. And uh, we commend them for the wonderful work they are doing for the family. And everybody is very happy now. So that we, we hope to find the time to keep the opportunity. Um, this automatically means that the petition you intended to put out and embark on the demonstration, you are going to withdraw that, right? Yeah, it's not actually it's not a demonstration. We are organizing it as a peace war to bring uh, to make an to make an awareness to the general public that everybody should come on board. Uh, you know, things have been happening as so as we do the structure. Uh, so it's a peace war. They start a demonstration. They are putting the police, and the police are giving them a go ahead, and uh, they are indicating the route to the parking devoid of technology. Abdul Rahman, thank you so much for speaking to us. Nuruddin, are you there? That is. All right, so um, did you also get a chance to um, find out from the police how long it's going to take um, them to come up with something from their investigations? Well, they say uh, they sent the docket to the Attorney General's Department for uh, perusal and then advice. So whatever the uh, department, the, the AG advises them is what they are going to do. So until they receive the docket, the, the docket from what is sent to the AG, uh, they, they wouldn't be able to tell us when they will finish with this investigation. But Gladys, I must also say that uh, those four people who were arrested on, uh, on the day the youth uh, from the hospital have also been granted bail with say charity one which were, each of them were supposed to provide to provide one public servant and they've done that and they've been granted bail. we are told that they will really appear in court on the 14th of next month next month yeah um what what are they being charged for exactly you know we earlier when they arrested uh the police told us that they they were charged uh, for uh routing and assault yeah they were charged for routing and assault, and, and so uh, they, been, they were reminded in, in prison, and they reappeared on Tuesday. They were in court, and 
the Benganda bill to reappear uh, on the 14th of next month. All right, Nurudin, thank you so much. We have been talking to uh, Ashanti Regional Correspondent Mahmoud Mo uh, Mohamed Nurudin, who has been giving us a bit more insight to the Konfuanoti Teaching Hospital Baby Saga. And we also spoke with a family member, Abdul Rahman, who tells us how excited and satisfied the family is about trend and development about the issue, and they look forward to having um, justice on their side. So let me quickly get on Facebook um, and see what um, some of you have been saying about the issue at the Confanoti Teaching Hospital and the directive issued by the Ministry of Health. So um, the, let's see. Sule Mahama says, to me, 14 days is even too far because they know exactly what happened to those babies. That's coming from Sule Mahama. Makion Kwame says, good move. Ministry of Health. O'Neill Lucas says most of them are working for Satan, so the public must be very careful and prayerful. Um, okay, so today, forgive us, um, we, we are not able to show you exactly the, um, the messages I am reading, but uh, I'll do well to tell you exactly who has said what. Frank Osafo says that's a very good decision. Isaac Quay says another 14 day. Why? Uh, okay, so Tekbete says, Ayo, the truth is now reve revealing itself. The heavy rains that fall on the leopard never wash off its spots. Despite all the pressure, they are still doing the investigation. We thank them. Jonathan Arthur says, Good moves there. They must produce the bodies of such babies. Uh, Zenith said, I am very impressed. I am happy to see something being done about it. No human being has to go through this. Abdul Hamid uh, Tofik says, Konfanochi Teaching Hospital is under the Ministry of Health. I think the ministry should have descended directly on the hospital because it is an uh, autonomous organization and must be responsible for this outdated and senseless act of doom. Quickly, let's see what you have also been telling us on WhatsApp about this issue. Um, okay, right. So let me just take one WhatsApp comment on the Ministry of Health issue. And then we get back to look at... Um, um, okay, my, my WhatsApp is just not opening. So let me just quickly go to A plus um, issue. What some of you said about his ban on Facebook. So, uh, Randolph Aqua says, in uh, uh, Randolph, your language is <laughs> it's a bit beyond me. I couldn't read it. Okay, but you ended it with Chia. So, you also think that, well, whether they ban him or not, mm, it's not a big deal. Asani Yao, a Jama Bernard says, what is BBC at all? Masa, they should clean themselves. <laughs> okay. Frenzy Al Frenzy says, Chia, gone international. Oh my, OMG. Uh, Red Pen Alcatel says, democracy is limited to this K, uh, KK at A. Senna Silva says, I agree with the man a hundred, oh, hey, you agree with him 110% is absolutely right. Freedom of speech, the BBC forgot that's right. I'm with A+. Plus. Um, let me quickly take my last one. Kelvin Ejikum says, A+, plus, may Lord bless you for that comment. Give, give on, uh, say to the world. Uh, mm. All right, so uh, you say, uh, McLester Mac just says, OMG. And now my last one for the night, Nana Kweju Adaka says, Chia, come to Ghana and you get what that means. Still, no gays in Africa. You just love that quote from A, <laughs> A plus, right? All right, so thank you so much for your contributions. This is where I draw the curtain on JN Interactive. Steve, what do we have tonight? Well, uh, coming up, we'll bring you more on the Ministry of Health um, ultimatum on Confort to produce uh, the bodies of these five corpses, uh, babies who died at the hospital. Mm. All right, and we also will be. Um,